And yes, I am glad to be a part of this panel this afternoon to talk about what is really going on in our country. Apple, 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 oh. Apple. I mean, I'm going to do give you guys a formal introduction. This was just this is what was supposed to happen during the 15 minutes, right. so you guys at least will know each other small. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, um, just so that you guys will know each other small. But we're getting started. I mean, we have. Yeah. So my my name is Dapo, uh, and I work in the financial service industry, uh, financial professional. Um, I think during this summer, I was able to uh, co-found. Um, an organization called Minority Focus. Um, obviously, because of all the stuff going on with uh, within the Black community, kind of motivated me to start something to promote businesses, empower businesses, empower community, and things like that. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, my name is Nkem, like uh, Marlon has said, my name is Nkem Oji Alala. Um, based here in Houston, Texas. Uh, uh, I'm a business uh, consultant, uh, speci uh, specify with data warehousing and software development. Um, also the CEO and founder of African Fashion Week here in Houston. And I've been uh, past president on a couple of um, um, organizations that have to do with um, the, the diaspora as a whole on the African level and on the Nigerian level. Um, work with the city of Houston, work on the, on the, the mayor's office actually, um, leading international trade and, uh, and uh, several other things. But he had a long, it's almost, you see his, his, his bio, really enough, serious man. bio. It's enough, Marlon, thank you. <laughs> and Marlon and I, you know, we, we went to the same school, Atlantic Hall in Lagos in uh, Ikeja at that time. Um, so we have a lot of history. I have a lot of uh, jokes for Marlon. <laughs> Well, 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 thanks everybody, uh, you know, for introducing us. I just want to at least let us know, you know, who you are. And um, although we're going to go to a more formal side of it, you know, because um, a lot of what we do um, is try to at least record what we're doing and keep it on record and everything be edited at least a little better, cutting out a lot of our goofs in the beginning. But um, yeah, so please, you know, put your phone on silent, things like that. And uh, I guess let us get started. We have, uh, oh, Shane was here. Shane was Moshini. Other classmate. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sean. Yeah. All right, don't worry. I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be name dropping anymore because now this is the real recording. <laughs> all right. All right, all right, all right. Let's get started. Well, so starting it's gonna be right, Marlon. Huh? Are we starting at 1.30 or one o'clock? It was supposed to be at no, you see, it's two o'clock Eastern. So it's actually supposed to be one, it's supposed to be one, we, we've already started, but okay. like I said, it's like a lot of what we're doing at least is for the, you know, so we can have a record of, you know, of what we're doing and everything mm -hmm. and officially have it done right and everything. And then uh, we go for there. So how it's going to run just to give you guys a little bit of a headway, this is what we're supposed to do before, but um, we're going to just talk about, um, I'm going to give like some little opening remarks here. Um, maybe give a little bit about the narrative. We'll introduce you guys. Um, officially, um, I'll read up your bios. And then, you, um, of course, you know, I want you to add in your own, especially to about your organization. Um, and then we're going to watch a little video to refresh our memories and just kind of get us in the mood of what we're here to talk about. Um, uh, that CNN clip, the latest CNN clip, um, you know, about the NSAS. And then we'll get into our discussion, um, you know, with some guiding questions, you know, so that, um, people can definitely, uh, if they have any questions to add, you know, um, they can do so. So let us get started. All right, everybody, I think, who's it? How many people do we have yet? Yeah, we have even seven. So who's that? Yeah, we have three. I'm Day Smith. Ah, it's all people in the house. Okay, no more name dropping. No more name dropping. This is a recording for real, for real. All right. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, welcome you to, um, the Voices of the African Immigrant Series and SAS Support from the Nigerian Diaspora. My name is Marlon Solomon. I'll be your host tonight. And um, I represent the Afro-American Culture Initiative. I founded the organization in 2015. Our mission is to build cultural bridges in the African diaspora with education, technology, and travel. 
Um, basically, we are an African diaspora cultural education provider. Um, we do studies, research in R&D, um, research and development projects, management, um, and we um, provide, so we provide educational programming and material, um, and we get, the, we get the word out with our social media and our online events like the one we're attending today. All this is done because we are starting our online school at the beginning of the first quarter of next year called the Afro-American Academy, which will be an online resource where you can go get a lot of information about African-American history, financial literacy, um, cultural competency, cultural nutrition. So we hope that you'll uh, just stay, in, hey, you've got our email, so you'll be, you're definitely going to be getting our emails, letting you know all the updated stuff. So. Like I said, welcome to the NSARS um, support for the Nigerian diaspora. I want to wish everybody a thank, happy Thanksgiving, and I hope um, this weekend has bring all the blessings. I think that this weekend, in particular, this Thanksgiving of this year, 2020, I think we all know that we have a lot to be thankful for, um, especially the little things that maybe we took for granted. So I hope everybody, um, you know, with all the pandemic and stuff, I hope everybody's keeping safe. So. The, um, a little bit about the NSAS for somebody who may not know what's exactly going on, but there's been a, you know, a lot of protests in Nigeria um, due to um, a special police unit called the uh, Special Anti-Robbery Squad, um, in which, well, due to a lot of the issues that we have in Nigeria, um, they were taking advantage of a lot of their, um, they were taking, if somebody's echoing, I think, um, Dapo, yeah. Yeah, so um, because of the NSAS, uh, um, a lot of issues were having in Nigeria. People were taking advantage of the people they were actually pretending to, they were supposed to protect, meaning the policemen. And um, the people rose up against it, started peaceful protests against it. And um, for many of us that know the situation well, we know that the NSAS is just the beginning, the tip of the iceberg of this issue and that it's really a microcosm of the many issues having to do with government, um, where you have issues of no pay, you know, these civil servants are not being paid, some of, or some of them are like, they, they are old months in salary, as well as not having pensions and other things like that. So how do you expect them? They're victims of the same animal, so to speak. Um, these, these protests, um, these protests now culminated in Lekki Toll Gate Massacre on October 20th, 2020, where um, Nigerian security forces opened fire on peaceful protests um, at the Lekki Toll Gate. Um, me personally, I was there in spirit, and I mean that because at the simultaneous was as it was happening, a friend of mine who knows DJ Switch put me on to the link. I said, hey, follow, you know, follow DJs. I wasn't even following her. I followed her and started watching it. I was in Dallas at the time visiting my family. And I must say the what I heard on the thing was so touching and riveting. It has been the driving force behind um, a few of us, not everybody, but a few of us getting together to try and see what can we do? You know, like what can we actually do? And it was quite frustrating at the time because obviously we're full of emotions. We've seen some things that we couldn't imagine seeing in Nigeria. We're seeing them live. I mean, we were, I was experiencing it live. I, I couldn't, I left all my work. I was just on IG. And, you know, the, you know, immediately following, you know, even before the protest, had, I mean, you know, before that bad day, the protests had been going on for weeks. And what we had seen was so encouraging with the youth, with even the, the way things were being funded you know, and, um, you know, they had toilets and camp things to, to buy for people to, you know, to rest and sleep outside. So it was actually quite refreshing to see the youth singing, waving their flags and, you know, and camaraderie and all. And um, man, it was very exciting. People were doing things. People were spending money. There was all sorts of things, uh, cryptocurrency, all sorts of different manners of technology being used to fund a movement to keep peaceful protests. And I keep on saying that over and over again, you know, and I must say the response was A plus, even with accountability, with the organizers publishing the budgets of what they saw, what, you know, what they spent. And I found that to be very encouraging because like, they want to know, they wanted full transparency. 
And I think that they were acting like a world-class organization. And you're gonna hear me say that word world-class a lot in this presentation. But there was also repercussions for their actions, for their brave and patriotic actions that we will discuss um, here today. But I want to focus on the short, you know, we did a lot of short-term awesome things as a Nigerian diaspora. But the question is now, what are we going to do for the medium term for next, you know, maybe the next election cycle going on, maybe three to five years, something like that. And then what are we going to do for the long term? Now for the short, the medium term, I really think that that's where our focus needs to, to, to lie. And, you know, God willing with, you know, with some luck and some hard work and perseverance, then that can guide us and open the road for what maybe we need to do in the long term. So, but, uh, you know, let us, I think, you know, here at the Afro-American culture, we didn't, we decided that we don't know exactly where this road goes, but we could, we should at least present our platform and make it open to have these discussions, you know, these discussions that will at least start the process of uh, progress in the country that we all love. And to end my little, my, my opening remarks, I want to say that whatever disagreements we may have in how we get there, let us always remember that we're all going to the same place and we are all patriots. So without further ado, I would like to uh, introduce our panelists. But before that, let me just uh, give you a little bit of rundown of the um, Afro-American Culture Initiatives, uh, well, this, this platform. Right, so we have, um, if you look down, you have poll, we're gonna have a poll that you'll be taking and answering questions. Trust me, it's completely anonymous. We don't know who's answering, what question, how, it's just some questions that you answer. And, um, and then we'll, we'll see how many percentages of us here that came today, whether we think this, that, or the other. And everybody will be able to see the answers, full transparency. And there's a survey after the program, please fill it out. This is how we um, can measure our outcomes to our donors and supporters, letting them know that you are here and what you gained from this, um, from this um, event. Then if you have any questions that you want the panelists to answer, please, there's actually a special part um, of the infrastructure below where you can actually hit the button and actually get a question and put in your questions before we get to the end, okay? So that uh, at least we can let them have a, a running start before you start giving them long questions <laughs> to answer you. And then um, of course, feel free to comment in the chat, but like I said, this is this our family. So please uh, uh, let us keep everything above board. We're all just trying to solve the same problems together. So our first panelist, her name is Olawumi Akiromi. She's the executive director of the Nigerian Youth Organization of Boston. She's been doing that since 2017. Um, the Nigerian Youth Organization of Boston uh, was initially established to give youth positive experiences and inspire them in hope for, for a better future. As a 501c3 nonprofit organization, the organization is now focused on uniting Nigerians and those in the, in the diaspora to learn more about their culture and support each other. The mission statement is working to unite Nigerian youths and professionals while fostering an environment for collaboration, networking, and mentorship. Our next panel. Oh, you know, they, you know they, I, at the end of everything, everybody will be able to, I, I want it to be more of a family thing, everybody can talk. So um, the next, the next um, 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 panelist is uh, my good friend, um, Kenjika Ojiolala. He's a business development consultant by profession who focuses in business intelligence, data warehouse and software development. He has worked in various technical project management positions with affiliated computer services, Reliant Energy, Direct Energy, Project Manager, Engineering Operations and Initiatives for GE Oil and Gas, and Siemens Energy Wind, I guess in wind power. In Kemp studied business management at the University of Houston, Victoria, and also attended University of Texas, Dallas with a major in computer science and minor in organizational leadership. He is very passionate about international trade in Africa, fashion, and community service. Through his work in Kemba supported charities like Houston Food Bank, Dress for Success, Breast Cancer Foundation, and St. Jude Children's Hospital. And we'll add Afro-American Culture Initiative to that long list. Our next panelist is Dapo Lagbaju. He is a financial uh, 
professional with Bay State Financial and Bay State Wealth Management in Boston. He works with individuals and small businesses with strategies to build wealth, preserve wealth, build legacy, and achieve the American dream. He offers a variety of products that can help meet a number of insurance and financial needs. This includes, but not limited to college funding, retirement, managing costs for extended period of care, and lifetime income strategies. He's a Nigerian by birth who migrated to the United States almost two decades ago and is now a US citizen. He is passionate about helping everyone attain a financial freedom, um, especially in Africans, African-American community and minority communities by educating and providing financial resources. When he is not busy with work, he loves volunteering for nonprofit organizations in his spare time. And he is a board member of the Afro-American Culture Initiative. So I wanna thank all of you for, um, um, you know, for joining us today. So, like I said, I want us to watch this video on the other side, please. We'll, we, you know, we, I'll expect you to just give your points, your talk, you know, about what we've just seen, and also, you know, further introduce yourself to the, to the audience. Hold on. So I have to. Yeah. Hold on, I have to. The thing I silenced it because we were talking. Let me give me a second. Is government CCTV footage from surveillance cameras. This is government CCTV footage from surveillance cameras overlooking Lecky Tollgate. Recorded without sound, it was shown as evidence in the judicial panel. You see soldiers approaching, firing shots here and here. We lined up the footage and it corroborates our previous reporting to show the first time we see and hear gunshots. Notice the building to the right of your screen. Here is the same moment from that building. They are releasing fire. They are releasing fire. CNN geolocated and verified the footage you see to mark the exact time and place. Moments later, more CCTV footage. People alarmed. Here is the exact same moment from the other side of the gate. Shots can be heard. But the CCTV doesn't capture everything. This is what it shows at the time we believe shots are fired towards the protesters. The surveillance camera pans away. But this is what you see on the ground. In videos obtained by CNN, it appears to show the army shooting into the crowd here and again at the top of your screen, here. At the judicial panel, the CCTV footage stops at around eight o'clock. The Lecky Concession Company says this is because it was tampered with. What it doesn't show is this crucial moment where DJ Switch live streams on Instagram after 8 p.m. Everybody look at this. These are the bullets that were falling, that were falling by our side that were, were dodging bullets. CNN has verified that these bullet casings are from live ammunition. They are of mixed origin. Some are Serbian. This one from 2005. Former and current Nigerian military sources verified to us that these munitions are currently in use by the Nigerian army. At a hearing for the Judicial Panel of Inquiry, the army made an admission. The soldiers will be given both live and blank bullets. In this particular case, we saw that this protest had but eyewitnesses and families we spoke to say the ammunition used that night by Nigerian authorities was very real. This is where I was shot and the bullet went through my back. Up until this point, the army had denied they had live bullets at all on that night. 
It confirms a key finding in our investigation, that there was live ammunition at the scene. This admission is the latest in a series of constantly shifting narratives as to what happened on October 20th at Lekki Tollgate. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, said that the army fired blank ammunition into the air. He also dismissed CNN's investigation as fake news and misinformation. Now, in the aftermath of our reporting, both the United States and the United Kingdom are calling on Nigeria to ensure that its investigation is free and fair. There you have it. CNN has done the research. So now we, you know, now we can discuss the research because that's another thing that I want to point. That's what stands out to me about the, the, the video um, is the research that was done um, and how thorough it was and how we can do that research on other aspects of our own um, existence. So we cannot be fooled by um, anyway, the fault of the, 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 the inaccurate reports given to us by the government. Anyway, that was my bit. So enough of that. Um, I guess allow me let you um, please take it away first. Uh, introduce yourself a little bit and um, please give like the first the stand the thing that stood out the most from this video for you. Well, thank you um, again. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of this panel. Um, I find it quite interesting watching this video because knowing that the social media and news are our ways of getting, you know education on what's going on and resources. Um, I mean, the CNN is pretty much one of the reliable news anchors I do watch and um, it's pretty much straightforward to the point. I mean, it's really sad how our country <laughs> relays information and even when the officer or the sergeant was talking, he was struggling. It, he had like five minute pauses. <laughs> so you can already tell there that it's like, okay that they're lying in some sort of way. And and I don't know, the logic of them coming in in a large crowd shooting light ammunition to folks that are looking for a more peaceful campaign or um, protests is very appalling to me. And I don't understand that why people will lie about them being injured from their body parts. Um, and then also having other folks that we know that live back home with footage from social media. So just basing both of that together, it's like, how are you telling us that you actually didn't use, use blanks? I've never even heard of Nigeria even using blanks in the first place for anything. <laughs> it sounds so. like a waste of money to me. Why <laughs> exactly. would I spend money on blanks? I need bullets to kill people, not to pretend to kill people. <laughs> I'm saying, and that's just not the right way. I mean, I don't know if they're just probably just ignorant on their part to say, hey, this is how we handle our own problems. We don't need outsiders to come and tell us what to do when it comes to protesting. But this is a time of crying out where we need to change the way we work our government. So I'll leave it as that as an opening statement. Uh, no, no, I, I, no, we don't worry. We have a, we have, okay. we have, we have enough time to okay. get into the details. No, no, no. But thank you for that. Uh, Dapo, you too. Like, uh, you know, so please introduce yourself and just like what stood out from this video that really, you know, touched you. You're, you're on mute, you're on mute. Yeah, thanks for having me on here. Um, you know, it's glad to uh, be on here as well. Um, I think for me, it's, it's kind of crazy. I understand why uh, I think um, Zim, uh, Lai Mohammed was saying that they were gonna sue CNN because what they ended up doing in Nigeria was to ban or fine every other stations that was reporting live and bringing the authentic news to people. Obviously, they can't do that to CNN to shut them down. So, and I understand why some people always have their reservation about uh, news media, you know, but uh, at this point with this information, I think CNN is right on point. Um, I think they've done their due diligence uh, to give, um, uh, this information, the right approach, so that everyone, everybody can understand what is actually going on. And I, I do, I do love the fact that uh, some of these things were being disputed by the federal government that this never happened, 
I mean, it kind of made me go crazy because I was like, I thought we all saw this. Now you're saying this didn't happen. So it was actually great uh, that CNN actually put in so much effort into getting this out so that people can actually see, not just people in Nigeria, but people around the world, to see what Nigerians have been dealing with, with this useless, uh, <laughs> redundant uh, government. So- I feel you, bro. <laughs> sorry to say that, but- No, you know, no, no, I love it, I love real. it, I love it. <laughs> you know, so, um, uh, you know, so that, that is just what I have to say about that. And obviously, we, the upcoming stuff will, will kind of like uh, yeah yeah no 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 problem no i i completely agree it was nice to see the effort um that they put in to i mean doing the due diligence and we can we could have done this ourselves exactly. you know, in fact there might be some nigerians working in cnn that made sure this was done <laughs> no you know to the actually it's funny because to, <laughs> so, some of the uh, other news outlet actually did but what they did in nigeria was to silence them yes, by yes. finding them yes. so and you have to give uh, kudos to Nigerian uh, um, news media uh, organizations as well, because under the dire circumstances, I think they did the best they could do. You know, so I think that's another thing we need to do. Like uh, stations, like um, I actually forgot their name now. Um, no, Arise is one. I know. Yeah, Arise, they, they did. Arise. They did well. I know, but obviously they're not CNN because CNN is not. You have to be very powerful or you yeah. have to be you have to be very powerful sorry you have to be very powerful you have to be um you have to be ba basically um dispersed like social media in order to get you can't you can't you can't be anywhere in the middle you have to be cnn or completely dispersed in social media but let's get in kemjika's um let's get in kemjika's um um view in kemjika, you're muted okay um yeah yes so um, Alan, once again thank thank you very much for me to this, uh, this gallant um, panelist. Um, you know, I'm going, I'm going to speak with from a different perspective. Uh, one being the fact that growing up in Nigeria until I was about 17, 18, you know, um, seeing Nigeria at that time in the 80s, in the, in the early 90s, right? And then moving here to the US and seeing Nigeria from a very different perspective. And it's quite evident to realize that uh, Nigeria is a personif personification of a dictatorship that's cloaked in democracy. And you can see that just the, the way the censorship on just the media this happened. Are you trying to tell me that after seeing all these various videos of people being shot in different locations, not just in Lagos, this was happening in different parts of Nigeria, that the, the government had the audacity to come back at some point to say, oh, we're going to do an investigation because they're not sure of what happened. This is, this is just, um, and, and then you start, like, like Dr. Wall had indicated, you start censoring some of this mainstream media in Nigeria itself, right? And, and uh, it, it had to take CNN, and, and, and I, saw, exactly. I don't know if you saw the one on BBC also, mm -hmm. uh, Arise TV, for them to come out with some investigative yeah. reports to show what was really going on in Nigeria before the Nigerian government itself decided to backtrack on what it said initially. So mm -hmm. um, I'll walk just, it back. Yeah, they just walked it back as if it didn't happen, right? Or it happened, but it wasn't self-inflicted. And then the whole thing about the blanks. What when did Nigeria start using blanks? You don't use blanks <laughs> for what? You know, if they're gonna shoot, you're gonna shoot. You know, so um, that's my take on the on the on the video. I, you know, I really appreciate all you guys' input on that. And I think everything was really covered. Um, the question is, you something happened there. We even heard more ridiculous things. We heard things like, um, it's Photoshopped. I mean, like, are you kidding me? How do you Photoshop IG? I was on the thing IG Live. These are the best actors and best production of Photoshop Nigeria has ever produced. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was sad and you know the funny thing about it was it wasn't really hard to actually piece together a timeline right mm -hmm. by the time you saw about eight or nine different uh ig live or ig stories it was it wasn't hard to piece, put together that timeline so it just it just looked so sad to me it just looked so sad that the Nigerian government instead of it saying hey Take accountability, which is the biggest yeah. problem with Nigeria right now. They're not going to take accountability. accountability. You, you, you know, this goes to our first question: government or CNN? Who do we trust? 
And what I guess the way I would like you, because we kind of talked about it, I think everybody can tell that the pan, where the panel lies on this. But how um, it's not just about you know who do we trust. How do we deal? We know our we know our leaders, mm -hmm. right? We know that there are fathers, basically, right? <laughs> Some of us are grandfathers in the case of maybe allow me, but <laughs> the younger one. <laughs> but um, um, how do we, you know, how do we trust our fathers? How do we talk to them in a way? to get them because of I think one of the jarring things for me was seeing like Fashola, you know, you know, pretending to find a camera and all these, you know, just say fake news. Like not even any effort. They didn't even put any effort. Like it wasn't even like well thought of. I I made a joke. I said that you know they can go to Nollywood and they can find many producers that would have given them a much better storyline to use than what they came up with. You know? Oh, damn Joe. And, and and so I guess when I say who do we trust I, you know, um, that's what I mean. Like, who, who, you know, what segment of this older environment can we start reaching out to the trust to to build these bridges? Because we can build bridges of trust with some members of this old crew, mm -hmm. because they're just gone. Forget it, right? So, who can we trust? Who do we trust? I mean, I Inside guess inside the old elderly, yeah, like the mentality. Sorry, go ahead, allow me. No, I get what you're saying. I mean. I to me, honestly, I don't know who I would be able to trust because just remembering when this came on surface on social media, it happened so fast. And when you say between the trust of the government and CNN, CNN, you can already see how they are already moving. Number one, they are so outdated on te technology that they couldn't even figure out a way how to even like, even just like hide their own story if they're gonna make a mistake. <laughs> at least so, form yourself well. Exactly. I get it. You so, know, just form well, at least. So it doesn't even make sense. So then they're over here trying to be like, and our guy just talking with one synthesis per five minutes of each gap. Can't even like, and then you want to copy how Trump is doing his own services. It's, it's not right. So right now it's like, I don't trust the government. We can only go off of what we're going because we who are the inside the government who like, okay. Like if you want to think of thinkers, mm -hmm. somebody like, if you want to imagine the perfect elderly person, cause we have to work together. And there were a lot of elderly, you know, older people that were funding these things behind the scenes. Okay. We're going to get into that in a little bit um, in our next question. But let us, what are some of the characteristics, um, Dapo? What do you think? Yeah, someone educate me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, it's, it's hard. It's hard to, to find anybody to trust um, among all these people you call fighters, honestly. Uh, Fashion law is more of a, I don't even want to say it here, um, you know, but I think one person that um, I didn't really know about that I actually liked the way he handled it was uh, the governor of, uh, I think, or your state, um, uh, Shea Mackinday or something like that. I think he, he stepped up. Um, I think there's some things I didn't agree with that. What, was uh, it? what did you like about what he said? What oh, he Shea, Shea Mackinday? Yeah. He came out, uh, he met with the public, um, not at his uh, office, you know, like uh, where they were clamoring for change and all that stuff. And he had a conversation with them and he actually continued the conversation because I think the other day I saw a video of him going to Loud Tech to actually go out there to speak uh, with the students and just uh, encouraging them that, you know, he was there to serve them. You know, honestly, I think at least with that is a good, it's a good step in the right direction. Yeah. You know, and I think that is what um, the governor of Lagos State should have done instead of succumbing to the federal government to take over and I mean, do what it did at the uh, 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 Lake Itoke. Sometimes, right. what what our people actually need is for you to step up and let them understand the reason why they voted for you. You know, because trust is not something that is given, it's earned. You know, you, you have to come out and be like, okay, I know you voted for me, but I'm going to continue to be here. And I think to me, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sonwolu should have actually stepped down. But obviously, I know we're in Nigeria that where nothing really works. He shouldn't be the one investigating himself. Honestly, he should have been fired. If any, any developed country, 
I mean, trust me, you wouldn't even get up to that point before they you actually step down. I, I honestly, it's very, it's very, very disheartening. Very. I, 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 I really like that. I like, I, you know, one thing I really want from this forum, and I really like the way you answered that, Dapo, because I want to focus also on not just what we are ending in Nigeria. We're trying to end SARS. I want to also focus on what are we trying to aspire to. What are the ideas that we need to start fomenting in our youth as to what they should be expecting? And what you said by him coming out and, you know, telling the, his, you know, the, you know, said the governor of Oyo went out and told his, his, his constituents, say, hey, I'm here for you. Even if it's not as, you know, maybe we don't trust him or we think this or we think that. I think somebody well, he, in the chat group said, yeah. at least, yes, it is along the lines of a democratic society. And yeah. it's even... I mean, you know, even some of these democratic societies that we have here in America, whatever, there's a lot of stuff that goes on that's not above board. But at least there's a, there's, there's, so it's just that it's not just open and on open, open season. You have to at least come and say you're accountable and be accountable to the system and to the, you know, and to what it is. So I, I, I really appreciate you mentioning that. And Kendrick, what was it, your, was it, your take on who in this, you know, and, 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 and you know, one of the great things about the panelists that, the, you know, one. You know, allow me is kind of is the youngest. I think kind of in the middle is um is Dapo and Kendrick and I are, well, oh, we're, yeah. we're, we're older than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's a different perspective from, um, you know, generations, which is important. So and are we being closer, the closest out of all of us to the elder, <laughs> that we we are probably charged by the place of our position with the um with you know with the advice that we must give to those that are way younger than us mm -hmm. and how do we advise to bridge the gap that's a very difficult question to ask and um the answer the answer uh will come in different parts right um i think in, if you look at most let me not go there i was about to say if you look at most developed countries let me not go there um thank you <laughs> It would be wise, eh? it would be wise, you know, to, in a sense, transition some power to the young people, right? And this normally happens during um, OEC elections, right? In, in most places, you see the transition from the old to the new that is done through the election or through the uh, electoral process within a country. And, and I think that if you just look at the process of power of Nigeria since 1960, you will find that that hasn't been the case, right? You've had, uh, you've had Babangida who has ran for president four times. You have Buhari who was president in the, in the 80s, but is now a president now. You have Obasanjo who was president in the, in the late 70s that was, was now took, took over power, I think in 1996 or 1992, right? So you see that, uh, what's his name, Bironsi, was 36, Gowon was 37, Babangida was 44, Gowon, um, Buhari was 41. These individuals became presidents of, the, of, of Nigeria at very young ages, right? Now we're having presidents at 70, 77, 81, 84. It's the same mindset. There's a, there's a, there's a thought process. Uh, some, I heard someone say something that um, over time, eh, time makes us bigots. Right? Some of the things that were accept in 1970, we'll find in, the, in 2022, we no longer accept them, right? But then the thought process is still instilled in those that we call leaders. And for those leaders to step down, it, 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 it requires for us to change the machine, the cogs within the country itself. And that's the, and that's the, that's the problem that we have here is that, yes, we want the young people to step up. Yes, we want the young people to rule, but how do we give them the instruments for them to be able to rule? It's not a question of us saying one thing, you know, but it's also the same of acting. How is somebody like somebody has a senator making 40,000, 50,000 a year yeah. going, to, going to teach a young senator to be on how to be a good yeah. senator without collecting bribes and corruption? You understand what I'm saying? So I think that is, that is that's, that's the uh, uh, issue that we have. Long term is okay. Do we want to change? Yes, and that's one thing I love about the SARS movement. It's it's gone beyond SARS, obviously, mm -hmm. right? It's exactly. Just, yeah. Right. If I 
if, if I'm putting this much energy as a young man, I mean, there was a time when, when, when I first started my business in Nigeria, I met a couple of young people. Um, 20, one was, uh, DG was 21, another guy was 24, and they both had their masters at 24 from U mm -hmm. Unilab. And I'm like, in, in, in America and in most places, if you, if you start with their pedigree, you're going to be making six figures within a year or two, right? But in Nigeria, it stops there. Education stops where, where, where the government fund is debunked, right? There's no opportunity. There's no job opportunity. There's no growth opportunity. There's, there's nothing. And then you start criticizing young people for not stepping up. Stepping up to what? What are they going to step up to? You have, you have pulled every rug under their feet for them to go to slide. What they're standing on now is not solid ground. So now, I don't know how we're going to do it. But we yeah, have well, you know, I get it. But that's, that's why we're here. You know, we have can, to have can, a discussion. We can, have can to start I, talking about it. You know? Can I piggyback on some of the things here? Just to... Okay, okay, okay. No, you can definitely do that. Can you do that also with the idea of the silence of the Nigerian elites in mind? Because we have to move on. Okay. To the, to we have seven things to go in, and I'm sure we can definitely get everybody's point in. But so, yeah, go ahead. But, but, um, but you know, you're, please shape your answer to also start us off on our second question. Yeah, it, it is actually... Is a, okay, silence of Nigerian elites. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's so far, it's actually, uh, actually tied to that too. Uh, and, you know, to go back on what uh, my brother was talking about, I think the problem is like we've encouraged bad leadership to be the norm in Nigeria, you know? I mean, all these people will call, um, what do you call them, like the elite. Are they actually elite? They Think go, about it. They go for us. Yeah, they're not elite. Because when, when you look at it in this country, uh, this is what I always tell people. Uh, you look at the founder of uh, Facebook, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, Microsoft. You can read about how they made their money. You know, most of this elite in Nigeria that we call elite, I mean, I, I don't know, I've been reading a lot on Forbes and most of them, the way they make the money, you just wonder like, I mean, it, it's crazy. And when young people see that and you want them to become normal to like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna build. No, I don't have time to build. I'm gonna do it like all this jagged band and all these people are doing. It. Everybody talks about jagged band, jagged band. I mean, if it could build, why stay in politics for so long? Yeah. Think about if it, if I mean if you could build your own business, why become godfather to several governments? You know it's it, it's just the way it is. You know they they're gonna be silent because you know that's how they make their money. Thank you. That um, was um, that part, that Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no. But okay. But can you? Um, I get them. But when I speak of the Nigerian elite in this context, I'm actually saying that out of all the Nigerians who have been able to achieve, you know, I guess, a certain amount of wealth and education and exposure, because it doesn't mean about edu just even being abroad or whatever, mm -hmm. how many percentage of that Nigerian is, I mean, we would be considered elites if you want to count every single Nigerian. Exactly. Um, every From the poorest of the poor farmer to the to us, we are the, this elite. And uh, what I'm trying to say is that our own, within our own ranks, within the ranks of people who have things to lose, may it be their house or their family or whatever, these are the leaders that I'm trying to understand or trying to see, because they're oh, the ones okay. with means. They're but the ones I, with I means. They're the ones that can fund it. Yeah, yeah but, 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 but are they, why are they silent? Are we afraid? But, but, but you, you know, um, just like my brother said, you know, he's, he was going back to years and years of when he was young. I mean, I bet all of us have probably have a lot of history, things to talk about. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it, you keep beating the same drums, but the sound is still the same. It frustrates you. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. When I first came to this country, I honestly, I didn't want to have anything to do with Nigeria because I felt like Nigeria didn't do nothing for me. But obviously, it changed after maybe about 10, 12 years or something like, you know what? I can't just let go of, you know, Nigeria and stuff like that, you know? But I mean, there's so many people that came into this country from, I mean, with poverty, with so much responsibility that just wanted to take care of that. Mm -hmm. And 
it's so different to when you talk about um, developed countries like white Americans or white people around the world. It's not like that. You don't get up and start curing other generation of uh, situations before you even start working on yours. You understand? Now you have to take care of your own family first. You have to take care of your own brother. You have to take it, and then you now get to yours, which is left alone, which nobody's gonna take care of except you do. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, when you talk about the elites and you know uh, abroad and everything, there's so much on everybody's plate, honestly, yeah. that they can't just leave it and be like, "I'm gonna go support Nigeria from where to where." Yeah. So. You know, that, that's the reality of things. It is when people are comfortable that they can at least, you know, uh, lend a helping hand to someone that needs help. You know, you can you have to be comfortable. And I think most people, they need to get to that point before they start, you know, saying something. And sometimes they voice their own opinion and things like that. But you have to understand, it's still Nigeria. The people you're fighting for in Nigeria sometimes can also be the ones that will kill you. Mm. Mm. You know, Preach, what I mean? because, you got everybody because that is just the way it is. So you have to understand how to, and, and I think the good thing about this, um, this NSAS thing is like, it's more about building coalitions now going yeah. forward. So we're all on the same page. So when I come, you're not going to be like, somebody's going to be protecting my interests, not unlike before that, oh, let's just take, take him out. You know, so the, I think that is different. So it, it has, man, it's tied to a lot of things, man. It's not yeah, just no, one I, thing. I, I, I get you. I get you. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so allow me. Can I ask? Okay. So that on that same kind of silence of the yeah. Nigerian elite, and you know, are we afraid? One of the things that I've always, you know, found amazing is, you know, when we come across, when we come to America, we look at America and we follow the rules, but we don't really explore some of the things mm -hmm. going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. In America, there are a lot of millionaires and billionaires that. They also have um, you know, foundations and other nonprofits that they're supporting because they are using that to pay their taxes to fight their, so they will not be silent. There's different ways to talk. You can talk with your mouth. You can talk with your money, right? What do you think, um, how do we, because like, you know, especially even with Afro-American, we, we always look at, you know, and we try to su support Nigerian things but we does see that the, the 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 mindset is not that of that that oh we can we can we can basically hire this organization or support this organization to do the fighting and the noise for us mm -hmm. right how do we talk to how do we talk because you've been in a non-profit organization how do we how do we talk to um to our elders about these kind of things when they want to control you at the same time well, i mean <laughs> There's so much stuff going on. I don't even know where to start with this conversation. I know, I it's, know. I mean, I guess, okay, for, for starters, the one thing that just gravitates me as I'm looking at this power presentation, the power of the people is stronger than the people in power. I love that quote so much because the fact that what we're going through right now is so true. Who are the elites? Just like our brother Dapple said, as you love the area of Nubian Square. <clears throat> okay, you're, Ro you're Roxbury. <laughs> <laughs> yes, representing Roxbury. <laughs> I thought it was me. I was looking at <laughs> No, no, that means I'm like, is it me? <laughs> I know, I'm waiting. I'm on the busy street. This thing is just... No, 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 wait. no, you know, it's been a whole lot going on more because of the COVID responses. Mm -hmm. It's actually, we, we can hear the difference. They're crazy. Exactly. So That's I guess what I'm trying to say is that coming here, me being born here in America and then having family members that descended here, right? So a lot of folks be like, oh, I want to come to uh, America or wherever because they feel like they're going to be free. They're going to be able to, you know, express their talents or become the doctor that they want. But then they come here and they realize that they obviously are suffering more, but more in a strategic way, not in the fact of how folks feel like, you know, poor and poverty in Nigeria. And I say this because there are a lot of things that we need to look at first. I am very grateful for NSTARS of where it came out as of now. I say that because we're looking at the same um, aspect where the protesting here in the states of um, George Floyd and all these other individuals that were affected by police brutality. Why did it take all these instances for it to fire up and now everyone is speaking off their voice? And now that we have, um, I guess you could say, beat an election that could have went to the left. So 
I'm and I'm just trying to give example of how Nigerians think. Adults are very hard to maneuver. Our parents, they're the type of individuals, whether they are wrong or right, they want us to listen and be quiet and do what we're asked to be told, even if it's not the right thing. Infantilization, that's the word, infantilization. That's my new word, infantilization. It was used by Femi too. Yes, by, no, yeah, by, shame, yeah, by Kuti, shame. Shame Kuti. Yes, infantilization. Go ahead. Oh, I say this in the matter as of like, oh, these folks, everybody thinks they are elite. They love their names, honorable this, doctor that. But at the end of the day, what are you really giving back? What is your what is your legacy actually giving hope to the children that you bring into this earth or to everyone that's around you? So right now we have to figure out a way how to talk to these adults and realize that yes, thank you. You have set the pathway for us. You have made our history, but now you have to allow a, a, um, a platform for the young people to really talk and show more work. The technology piece, we can handle it. You're trying to sign uh, up on, on social media, it's not going to work. That's the only way people are going to find out information. Right. You no. take it or leave it. If it's going to affect you, the, the big leaders are going to be quiet because just like Dapple said, it's going to hurt their pockets. So they don't know where to stand. If they're taking side money on the end to take whatever bribes and stuff like that, they don't want to show they're supporting it. Mm -hmm. They're going to find some ways to sabotage it. And not knowing that their children are the ones out there on the forefront, but they want to silence them as well. Now, how do we do that without getting at each other killed? I don't know. That's the reason why some of us do not want to go into politics. There may be no solution to that. Somebody may have to die, but... Uh, but someone's going to have to take that uh -huh. stand. Somebody... That's going to be... I mean, with, with this answer, I think there'll, there'll be better solution to it because now it, it's... You have to understand fighting the same battle. Right. Um, there is a divided will fall, right? Mm -hmm. So if we fight it together, and we're all like in 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 sync. I think it would be better for us to understand that. It's all it's always about strategy. It's not just because oh, you know, because what they're going through in Nigeria right now, it affects everyone. Yes. It's not just you know. I know the rich people don't care, but majority of Nigerians it affects them. So if it affects them, that is why this thing is going crazy all over the place. The ancestor. Yeah, but we have to find a way to basically hit the pockets. And I always say that we're, we're the, like the number one consumers, besides being in the States, when they say, oh, the African-Americans are the top consumers. So we, so are we as Africans. We love Gucci this, fine things, iPhone, cell phone. If you take all that away from everybody, how's everybody going to live? They're going to feel like they can't be able to survive because they don't have the newest things. It's like we live in a very materialistic world. So we have to figure out how to take these prized things that we own and use it for the greater good. You know, yeah, you know, I, I completely agree. And can God, I mean, I, I, you know, especially you know our upbringing. I, you know, the people we know yeah. and where they've all ascended into into society. Yes. And if some of the people we know are, man, they're titans at this very moment. <laughs> and you know, and the issue is that if if these that have a lot on their side. They, Nigeria has blessed them, whether through the family or whatever, and they mm -hmm. control a lot of bandwidth. How um, how do we get them to start speaking up? And even if they can't speak up publicly, because we all know we all don't want to leave, like Dapo said, said leave our you know you know risk our families and all these other things because of you know we're, we're trying to be freedom fighters. Mm -hmm. How do we get them to realize that that's but but you can support. Um, movements foundations and things in other ways how do we get them to come out of that money bro <laughs> i don't think we can that's what i do <laughs> i don't think because um the the components of what makes them elite right is their loyalty to the group that make that make them elite yes young that people, is cool yeah young people or nigerians didn't make uh, any of these uh, tunubu elites the people of who the people in Lagos in those days did not make Jack on the elite. You understand what I'm saying? It's the people that appointed them to be governors, or appointed them to be senators, or appointed them to be emir, or appointed them. These people were not were not uh, democratically elected. We were chosen. Right? So for us, for a lot of Nigerians now that are looking for change, part of that change is for us to start knocking down some of these unnecessary loyalties are being placed in the people that are making others elite. You know, um, we don't need elite people to talk because their time to talk has passed. They've, it, it, we've gone over 
30 years with these elites. You know, ah, I'm doctor of this, chairman of this, local government chairman of this and that. But you didn't do anything for the people at that particular time. You understand? So it's not, it's, the time is now for the new generation to, you know what, squash all that elite stuff. We're going to start all over uh, again. We're going to start off fresh. And, when, and this is the way we want to start. If the elite does not want to be accepted in, that, in this category that we're putting them in, then can go to hell. Yeah, we I, 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 I think that's awesome. And it leads us into our that's third um, question. Where we're, because, okay, when I say elite, I, mm -hmm. I understand that most of the elite are like, I have, an un I have an uncle. He was, you know, head of one of the major, like, you know, organizations in Nigeria and I always looked at him as presidential every time you see him this guy and eh? the way when he wears his suit everything like the guy looks like a diplomat <laughs> but he can never be fighting these army people that are in there to now you know um that you know that, that are in power now he, you mm. know he said the pen is mightier than the sword well the sword hurts much more yes. than the pen <laughs> It so, you know, but what is happening is that the, the how would I say, the bad elite, mm -hmm. the ones who are intimidating the good elite that went to school, they know how everything is supposed to run, they go to university, you know, they're educated people, they, but, you know, but they, are, they want to be able to talk like, uh, like how, uh, how Biden is talking. Oh, don't oh, worry, God. everything is going to happen. And then the system will just swallow the bad guy. Yeah, no, 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 that's not going to happen. <laughs> so how are we demonizing? So how, but one thing I've learned and one thing I saw that really hurt me, and even this uh, military, the, the, the military officer said it, is the use of the word hoodlum. Mm -hmm. To me, it is the same as white people saying thug. Yeah, where did they get that word in the first place? Where do you it's see? Just, it's just, you know, and I don't, I don't even want to even know where they got it from. <laughs> and then where they and where they and, and when they now justify this justification that was we just showed for shooting into the peaceful protesters was that he said that hoodlums had infiltrated the peaceful protest. So therefore, the response is to open fire on <laughs> what were the peaceful protesters? What were the hoodlums doing to the peaceful protesters <laughs> that weren't that bullets that was less dangerous than bullets? What was less dangerous than the book? Only like that. Uh, you needed to shoot. It was better. Please. Uh, uh, Imagine if we did open there. fire in, in an American protest. Do you see what will happen? The difference of how we're handling a situation from Even here. tear gas that they sprayed in front of White House was a big deal. Not a, not ah. a live bullet. Ah, that can fail. No. I mean, it goes back to the, to the same point I'm saying, that some of these, some of these uh, policies just have Changed. No, but it's the terminology I want to focus on. The 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 like the media, the name, the derogatory thug. Right. You know, it's almost like how the word nigger. Is yeah. Being Let's say it. We can say it. You know, black people didn't call themselves niggers, right? It was a term that was that was created by their captives a long time ago, right? Yeah. So the same thing with the word hoodlums in this particular case, right? This the hoodlums they are referring to. Right, are people who they actually selected also the military government selected true that, this, true put, that. Them, pour, pour them into the population and for them to create chaos. Right, it happens in a lot of societies. Right, so that they can say, Oh, these are the, these are your people, these are the people that we're, we're trying to protect you from. But you are the one that's actually creating those people. I'm not saying that people don't have different mindsets, there's some people that don't like NSARS protest at all, right? But they're not going in and, 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 and demonstrating, I mean, not demonstrating, they're not demolishing people's homes. They're not, you know, they're, they're not ransacking people's uh, uh, places of work and everything like that. Yeah. The government, it is the military that's creating that hoodlums. Those yeah, hoodlums, there's a campaign. And do these things, right? And make it look like these are the people who are trying to protect you from. But the reality is you are the ones that are creating these hoodlums. Yes, so it's, I, it's, yep. it's a, it's a democratic know. ecology that needs to be shut down. I, I, I completely agree. That's why I brought up this question. I believe that when you do not provide electricity, yep. and uh, you don't provide education, yep. and you don't provide water, yep. you don't provide even cheap petrol, mm -hmm. you don't provide every, I mean, what else is, what is there anything else again? Then I mean, everything you're you you taxing the remaining from the them, 
when you pro when you put people under this kind of pressure, and mm -hmm. then you now see actions that are not as civilized as you would like to pretend them to be, even from your own soldiers, you are creating hoodlums. So which one is? I would rather deal with the isolated hoodlum than this person that through his policies, beliefs, and ideology is doing nothing to create hoodlums. And finally, I want to say that remember there was no violence until the shots were fired. Mm -hmm. So you started it. Yeah. What's the terminology? I mean, we can go further in depth as well. Like, what is their terminology of hoodlum? Because these hoodlums that they're referring to are actually smart, educated folks who are just fed up, frustrated, and mad because they couldn't find to get yeah. money to feed their Look family. Look at them now. The the, see the picture we're showing. Those are the hoodlums. This, this, these are the yes. hoodlums. And then we because can't even they, keep our own people the to so -called stay in the country. Ones. They have to go outside of, go to South Africa, all these places. Then you have xenophobia, all these things. So right now we, mm -hmm. we need to figure out what we're winning because we're just fighting each other, travel wars. It doesn't make any sense. So we need a Nigerian Lives Matter. We need a prominent, strong group that's going to come and just change the mindset. There's no way we're going to change the old minds because they are still back in the Biafra war where, you know, who's, <laughs> who's better and this and that. We, we, we can't. And it's, it's the truth. It, we see within our parents, no matter how much they try to fight it, or even just our elderly community members. And the more conversations and these, you know, gatherings we have, you're going to hear the historic and different pieces of why this happened, why now we come to this. Oh, our children are just, they're coming now. They're just speaking now. They just want to come and make noise. And this, no, we're actually looking for the future. We are the future, whether they like it or not. So what are we going to do as individuals to make this change? And that is where the issue is. <laughs> no, no, you know, uh, that, um, that, that, that part deals with some of this. He talked to me about um, uh, some of, some of financial literacy and like legacy, passing on things that we as Africans don't like to pass things on. It's just mm -hmm. an issue. We want to keep it to the last but, but, thread. But the thing about it, Marlon, you have to have something for uh, you to pass on. Though. Right. Okay. So because the thing about, we, I, I'll be honest with you, I think, we can all be considered as hoodlums. But the difference between us and some other people is that, <laughs> I know, it's not like I'm swearing. Let <laughs> you know, me join see, him or let me But, but, but wait, but hey. wait, the reason why <laughs> I, I said that is, the reason why I said that is this. Um, for some of us, we were given an opportunity. Mm -hmm. That was why the term changed. It's just like when we talk about our communities around here. Uh, you say some communities are bad, some communities are like uh, people that are uh, African-American, that are there, this, you know, all that kind of stuff. But once you give them an opportunity to go to college, what do they become? They become better people. You understand? Because um, I'm, I'm also going to go, because I'm a Christian, and I don't want to put that on anybody. When Jesus Christ came to the world, he came for the hoodlums. Amen. You understand? Amen. Yeah. It, that, those are the people we came from. What did he say about the pin and the eye and the camel and that uh, the rich man cannot enter you the know, home? So, yeah. so, because I'm just trying to break it down. The, the thing that changes about that is when someone is given an opportunity. Mm -hmm. You understand? And these are the, uh, the, the, the reasons why this government and the past governments and the ones that we've had, they failed. There's no reason why anybody should be leaving Africa to come to abroad if they've done their job right. So saying the hoodlums, yeah, man, it's just the failure of their own uh, uh, strategies of just misappropriating our funds and just siphoning it abroad and all that stuff. That was what created all those situations. You know, you call people hoodlums and all that. No, it's, it's they failed. And that is why you have Hoodlum, yeah. so the, the, whatever they consider to be hoodlum in their own terminology. I, I agree. You know, so, yeah, so I didn't mean like you were hoodlums, but I just was trying to. No, get I get it. it. No, I get. No, 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 no. We understand. <laughs> no, no, no. I, no, I see my saying. brother there doing. It. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, it's just, it's just to be oh, careful. Wow. Just to be careful. No, but you know, like so in Kendrick, like this um, Nigerian, like so. Now, now this attitude of demonizing your own people that you actually come from, funny enough. You know, um, misinformation, all these things. Would you say Niger um, Nigeria is quote unquote practicing a democracy? I think you said it very well, but they're really acting more like a dictatorship 
Yeah. So, mm. how was it? How do you was it? How do we deal with this? How do we deal with that issue? Did, democracy or dictatorship? Which one are we doing? Democracy is. Yeah, I think I'm like. Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is, um, on paper, right? We are a democracy, right? Mm -hmm. um, but but by practice, there are a lot of evidence of dictatorship attributes, right? And I think part of the part of what we need to be able to do. It is the media itself ought to be truthful about those things, right? And there should be less censorship on them, right? And that, that, that's, the fun. when I say the media, a lot of us are social media friendly, right? It's easy for us to, to listen to a few intellects or a few media channels in Nigeria talk about some of the deficiencies that have to do with trust or the deficiencies that have to do with the allocation of funds or what have you, right? But then there are also some masses that don't understand or they don't translate some of that uh, understanding properly. So the question now becomes, how do we do that on the, um, to those people? And I think the easiest answer is grassroots, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we have to make sure, I when I say we, I mean like the Nigerian government as a whole, right? We have to make sure that some of this information and misinformation also is translated in the grassroots level. Grassroots level, that carry the most those are the people who actually go out those are the people that whether whether you want them to vote or you don't vote you count their votes more than you count the elite you count their votes way more than you count the middle class or the upper class right but when it comes to that i think that's what one of the things that we need to do number one is to educate people on, on what those practices are what bribery is what do you see as corruption right the ones you see and the ones you don't mostly the ones that you don't see Right, the accountability issues, the transparency issues. It's not a question of oh, this person said this, so that makes it true. No, there has to be a source that is credible. Where if anything that comes from this source, we know that it's, it's been investigated and put into. Therefore, it's what it should. That, that's that's, my that's one of my solutions. I don't want to know the other solution. I mean, I, I totally agree with you. Um, so just to piggyback off what you said, I mean, my background is tourism. So I realized that Nigeria is the number one. We are, you know, we're hot in our music. We're hot in different cultures of fashion, mm -hmm. our food, just being our, our cultural, just even that. So it's like, why can't we really get ourselves together? Why can't we see the bigger picture of how our country can grow? We were known as the number one oil, like <laughs> resource in Africa. And now it's like, everything's just like, you go to Nigeria, you see all the gas stations, just empty, 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 empty. It's just like, what are we doing? Like, why is everything not being done in a way that can make itself stronger as a, as a good country? Like, I can't go and advertise to folks like, hey, come over here to Lakey Beach or let's go out and just hang out. No, because you don't even know what beach is happening this time. They might have traveled one to another beach. Like, it's just so hard to gravitate and get people to really just understand how we work. And with that said, it's just like, how do we keep our people to stay in the country? And when they do, we should be able to congratulate them. We should be able to talk about them and say, hey, this is what the great thing, like our brother who got into seat in Congress. Does everybody know who that is? He's a Nigerian, but what can he actually do to help us represent the whole? He's not going to think about just Nigerians. He has to think about the whole, um, you know, the whole country for America. But we need someone like that to basically be a voice for us. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And then this that, is that, like, that makes sense. yeah. So, um, yeah. So you know, for me, obviously, it's dictator. It's dictatorship. Mm -hmm. So, if you're trying to shut down dissenting voices on Twitter, I mean, that's why you, like yeah, Muhammad, they're all Twitter trying Twitter, right? to, like, oh, shut people down. On, I'm like, come on, man. What are you doing? At least do your job first before you start doing all this preamble, all this unnecessary. Nonsense. Yeah, we acting like those Muslim countries, like you know. So I, I have Muslim order. I mean, <laughs> that's, true. that's true. That's true. We are one of, those, are one of them Muslim countries. countries. <laughs> but I feel like we're 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 reaching more towards how the Muslim um the Muslim countries are are dictating how you know how we do things. You, you 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 know when I look at it, I think that um if we look at it very, I mean, have, like I said, you know, I'm all into the research and everything. Democracy is a system, and that system requires a few things to be in place, otherwise it is not, a, it's not a, it can't work. It's not like you can have a democracy and not have um, 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 a proper um, media. So now what I think is happening is that the media 
is now dispersed. It's either super dispersed like social media or super strong like CNN. So we are, this the news coming out is holding our people accountable, making the democracy actually possible. You can vote all you like, but if you don't know what the people are doing behind the scenes and you're just guessing mm -hmm. as a community, maybe it's this one. No. And if they're not giving you a platform of this is what we stand for, then you're just guessing again because you're just, you're just whatever you stand for. Today you're with ADP, tomorrow you're with PDP, tomorrow you're with ABC. Then it goes on and so, on. We don't even know what you're going So, on. So Marlon, I, I, I get what you're saying, but I think most of these people in government offices are just lazy people. They're just lazy. <laughs> Taking the easy way route, huh? They, they, they're just lazy. They don't want to do the work. Just like you were saying, during the NSAS, uh, the people that were managing it, they did an awesome job for like about 15 or 10 days. They got the money. Uh, it was transparent. Where the money was going to all across the country, people were reaching out to them. And you wonder if these uh, young people can do this within like five, six, seven, eight days yeah. and make things work seamlessly. So we, I don't know, maybe we're just putting the wrong people in office. Yeah, we are. There's no maybe about it. We you know? We, right. No question about it. Uh, what, what you just said is 100% correct. Right, and and that's part of the reason why you know Mal and I uh, share the same thought process. You have to, we have to do a better job educating people on who yep. they are voting, and and the vote is like even here in the, in the U.S. Right, we focus a lot on 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 the on the presidential election, right? But the change really takes place in the state and local level. Exactly. Yes. yes. Because you're not going to change the law. You can implement the law. You can, you, you, there are so many drivers to changing the law that takes place on the grassroots level and the local level. And Nigeria actually knows that. But that's the reason why the majority of this, you see a, a small a small town that has 10,000 people in the election, they'll say they have 50,000 votes. How can a town that has 10,000 people present 50,000 votes and 50 of them didn't even vote for the first one? It makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, it's time for them to take accountability. It has to be accountability, you know, and that's what I'm saying that one of the biggest, I've had a lot of conversations as far as NSARS. Everything goes back to the roots and the source of NSARS. This mm -hmm. 99 uh, clinical, what do they call it, uh, uh, constitution, it needs to be removed now. Huh. Just need to delete, just remove that, that, take that thing, put it in the trash, and start over again. If Nigeria can start with a new constitution today, I agree. I certainly it agree. Includes, yeah. includes accountability and transparency, right? A lot of things will change. You will find that Nigeria, in the next five years, under a new constitution that is that is being organized by for the people, a lot of things will change. You know. Um. So, you know, I have a question. Um, I have a question for you on that. So, do you actually trust the current um, House no. of Rep to no. do that? No. So that's a problem too, because if we're going to change the constitution, we have to have the right people in Congress. I mean, it, it, as of rep and the Senate. Is it, is it rewrite it, the constitution or amend the constitution? No, 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 I can't amend this one. That no, why? You, have to, you have to toss it out, man. That's going go in the trash can. I mean, I don't know the structure behind it. I'm just trying to say Oh, no, that. it's terrible. It's horrible, guy. It's terrible. It's, really there. it's the most incomplete. No, you can. Yeah. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. read in my life. It should, it should but, be but, totally redone. Totally. It says, um, all I said, they are actually voting to amend. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like a constitution does not, you, I mean, I'm just trying to say, in all my experience with constitution, there's no way to literally, all you'll be doing is 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 re, is is amending it. Like I'm not, you can, you can amend, the amendment can be to remove everything and put a new one there, mm -hmm. but you're amending the same constitution. That's technical jargon. Don't yeah, worry about what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, that's technical jargon. I'm just I was wondering for the next one, I think it would be nice to educate all of us or folks like the, uh, what you call it? What am I trying to say? The political pyramid of who's in office locally and to the top. Because I'm trying to put everything into my mind as of like, okay, Borari, then who's you under mean the like a map of organization? Yeah, of you know how they have. Or, yeah, well, like I mean, you see, part. you see, you see, but this is where I go into what I'm, you know, like, you know, I know we're going to keep on like I'm talking about like a big fish. We have a lot of issues, and they require research. Mm -hmm. It requires us to pay people 
to get it done. You can't, it's not going to sit down there and just, and we can say, well, where is it going to happen? It's just going to, you know, we have to do this. We have to, you have to, you have to put a plan together. <laughs> you have to pay people to do this because the government is supposed to do this. True. But the government is not going to do that because I think it was in Kemp Chicago that said that if you have an organ, like you can't expect people to cut their own throats because that's what you're, that's what they're, that's what you're asking them to do. When they put by the line, yes, on the corner, yes, we do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm live. I said, <laughs> no, no, but no, but, but, but that's it, you know, because in the end of the day, look at it now. We have, we, we, we are educated people. We want something to happen. How do we get it done? How do we put mechanisms in place to let people get it done? And when you now start thinking, because, and this is why, because at the end of the day, they were targeting NSARC, the key protesters, some were put in jail. Mm -hmm. the celebrities like DJ Switch, they, they are in hiding. You know, uh, they, were, they, they, they didn't allow people to leave the country, mm -hmm. Account, freezing their accounts. I mean, like, yeah, hey, that's, guys, that's a bit crazy. That's so, troll problems. So, so whatever mechanism we're putting in to, to, to fix all our problems, has to allow anonymity, anonymity, mm -hmm. my mouth gone sleep. Some kind of anonymity and some sort of um, mechanism where people can secretly do it. I want to help, but I don't want them to know. That has to be a key part of our marketing strategy to whatever we're doing because Anonymous. people have to feel safe to support. In fact, I have to thank everybody for being on this panelist. Who knows what they are going to do? <laughs> Mm. The Nigerian FBI is up to now. That's all right. They will know. They will know each one of us when we go to Nigeria. I plan to go next year. They will know last week from there. Hey, okay, relax. So don't mess up. <laughs> hey, it's too late. It's already out okay, there. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So anybody want to take that up? Targeting of NSA key protesters, celebrities. What can be done? Because I mean, we need to put in something in place that will allow people to support this movement and not end up like them. Yeah, we need some form of protection. I mean, not saying like we need like our own police squad, but there has to be something where we can feel suddenly that like, oh, okay, we have a group or some kind of union. I don't know what to call it, but something there to say, hey, these voices are going to speak on behalf of our country and we need someone who's going to be supporting us and be that vocal person to speak on behalf or whether the UN or whoever that we need to make these changes. Please, if know. anybody has questions, please ask questions in the question and answer section. We haven't got any questions. If you have any question for the panelists that you want me to pose to them, please add the question, um, you know, add your question to the question and answer section. Okay, go ahead. Um, so uh, <clears throat> I, I think, um, I think there should be sanctions um, um, from, I mean, superpower like U US, UK. Mm -hmm. I know there were a few Nigerians that went into the UK parliament that was actually discussing these answers that actually um, okay. um, that's moving the needle in a way. Because the thing we don't want to do is like, because these celebrities are speaking up and key protesters and now they, they're threatening them. Most of me, DJ Switch is now in Canada and everybody's leaving, you know? That means they are actually achieving their goals by sending everybody out that they have a dissenting voice towards whatever they're doing. So I think maybe what we should start to think about is try to um, see if, I mean, US, UK, and these other, other countries can continue to be on the side of uh, the key protesters, the celebrity that are part of it, so that they can continue to have their voice, so that they can continue to be visible, so they can they can continue to protest till things are done. As long as they're doing it um, in a way that it should be done, that it's not you know like you know going to different places and robbing people and stuff like that, which I know that's not what they do. So I, I think that's what I feel um, that should be done, and I have to. Um, uh, thank some of these people in the UK parliament that Nigerians that actually bringing this up as well uh, to put pressure on Nigerian government to allow people mm -hmm. to continue to do what they do because you know the world has become a very small place now yeah. you know I mean whatever goes on in Nigeria yeah. I mean just like what went on in um, um, not China uh, forgot the name that was uh, you know the name of that country you know so a colony of China I think you know, they, Hong, they, Kong, they, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, you know, we just have to continue. I mean, we need the support of everyone, uh, black Americans, you know, white, Amer it, it, whatever, because 
we are the only ones that can also change things, that can change things in our own uh, community. But we need the pressure from the world and over to be able to put pressure on the government to allow it to happen. That's what I feel. I think, uh, I think your statement is 100% accurate. And I, and I think that's the start, right? Um, um, I was invited by the uh, state representative, uh, Congressman uh, Green, um, where he wanted to, he wanted to do something. He came, we had one of those protests. He came to the rally here in Houston. He saw the number of people that came to the rally. He didn't know exactly what was happening until he got there. And about a day or two later, he, he called some um, Houston um, community leaders and said, hey, how can we do something? And, and I think that putting the pressure in Nigeria, like in sanctions, sanction, sanctions right? And also get involved, getting the Amnesty International involved, getting the United Nations involved, getting the war powers involved so that they can put the pressure on Nigeria. Because you don't want people who are saying the right things, protesters or celebrities or, or ways that you just do. You don't want them arrested. You don't want them sanctioned. You don't want them censored. You know, these are these are all sites and elements of, of dictatorship. Right, and you don't want anything that comes against human rights. So, if we have international uh, bodies or international organizations that that are able to take interest in Nigeria, especially this NSARS, and can put pressure on Nigeria diplomatically and politically, right, economically also, where it affects the uh, the, the elites, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you, you, if if you, if you put it in uh, a sanction. That, that that would affect or directly affect them. Yes. It doesn't make sense, right? I agree. Actually, that's exactly what was discussed in yeah, England. Go ahead. Exactly. I mean, you just have to put sanctions that would affect the, the, the individuals. Leadership <laughs> as a whole, the leadership yep. itself. So. Agreed, certainly. No, I agree. Since they want to freeze people's account, they're not the only one that feed freeze account. Uh, <laughs> they will freeze yeah. them so fast. Yeah. Okay, so what is your opinion of the influencers, the media, the social media, and just even the crypto? There was a lot of crypto um, currency and things. Some people are funding this thing with all sorts of, you know, I don't even, if I miss it, I say, let me go and understand this crypto before they, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, so what's your opinion of how best um, these movements and the technology behind it needs to keep abreast because you have to understand the nigerian government is going to go back and learn their lessons from what they messed up before and i think that's actually more dangerous when they get you when they when they oh maybe we should be sponsoring some young people to be protecting us on the social media this that, and the other when when they start getting to that what is that with it what what's the message you have to say and what do you think we need to do to stay abreast and ahead of them because they have the whole no matter what i always say this that's true. I will cut it short, but whatever I always say this. No matter what, the Nigerian federal government, the whole federal government, only has one Instagram account like me, only has one Twitter account like me. Mm -hmm. So this online thing is a balancing tool. It makes it so that they cannot just they cannot target our media houses like before. Mm -hmm. They cannot target um, our accounts like before because crypto is on. You cannot even how are they going to even do it? You cannot do a lot of things because of all these social media. So what's the, the What's your advice going forward, uh, Dapo? Since you haven't spoken a little bit. Before. Yeah, um, I mean, thank God to uh, crypto <laughs> that help because uh, when they were shutting down everybody's account, um, the flute wave or whatever people were using, and some other accounts, they just start uh, blocking me. Um, thank God uh, to um, uh, the founder of uh, what is it called, a uh, Twitter, Jack that helped with uh, crypto to be able to move money around so that people uh, uh, for the end size can still go ahead and accomplish uh, the, the, what they set out to do. Um, I, I, also, I think with crypto, we have to be extremely careful because obviously um, it, it has some risk to it because people can also use it to fund against several projects. You know, but as long as it's being used towards the right purposes, I'm all for it. You know, and the good thing about it is that the government can't really block it, at least for right now. 
you know, maybe down the road in the future is something they maybe have power to do or whatever. But because uh, I think it helps. Oh, I can barely tweet. These guys can barely tweet. I don't think. Yeah, but 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 cool. you know, I mean, I, I, I things. Things are always changing too. You understand? Yeah. Because I'm saying down the road is something they may be like, okay, there's this yeah. or that. That's why I said we have to keep ahead. At least, yeah. you know, that, that option is there for people to still be able to continue to um, pressure this movement, to continue to support this movement, I mean, to continue to be able to achieve their goals. So, uh, I mean, I'm all for the crypto. Um, I mean, my opinion on the influencers, the social media, I think it's, you know, it's very important to know that without all these people with their followership, I mean, most people won't get this information out too. Because me that I have maybe 2,000 followers or 500, all these people have like over 1 point something million. Mm -hmm. You know, they also makes it possible so that a larger majority of people can actually participate and understand what is going on. And I think the other thing they can also continue to use that towards is education of uh, grassroots, you know, um, knowledge of voting, knowledge of your um, people that is in charge of your local government and all just like uh, my brother, uh, brother OG talked about, because it starts from there. And they need to start using those platforms to educate people more because we need more education uh, in Nigeria because there's so many things that people don't know. Because what we're always chasing after is totally different to what the government is putting out there, you know. So that is what I have to say concerning that. Oh, oh God, this poll is hard because all ah, of it. I didn't tell you. <laughs> really? all, all of the stuff you put here, I, I want to click all. <laughs> well, you know what? The, the idea is just to get an idea of the people of of what everything is going. So okay, for though I have launched a poll. Just mm -hmm. answer the questions mm -hmm. as you can. It's it's completely autonomous. It's not like we're going to need, you, you won't know who did what, but it's just so that we can, after we have our discussion, because we're on our last question now, okay. we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see the results and we'll see what people have to say. So everybody should just kind of answer them however best you can. Um, it's no, um, there's even after this, I won't even be able to access what was, what was uh, the answers, what they were. So then finally, um, what is the role of the Nigerian diaspora? Now that we've talked about basically, I think about almost every issue mm -hmm. um, with NSAS, our final question is, what is the role of the Nigerian diaspora in this movement? And that way you can kind of use it to close up. Um, yeah. Yeah, ladies first, allow me. Sorry. I mean, to be honest with you, we play a big role. I mean, just to piggyback off of the influences and social media, it can either go to the right or the left. It can hurt everybody in their own industry. So if, if they're freezing bank accounts, um, the financial district or the financial services are gonna be hurtly wrong because then people are not gonna trust the banking system and then they're gonna end up keeping their money in boxes. But as a, as a Nigerian diaspora, we are looked at as of like, the mighty Africans, you know, we're educated, we make moves, we're either famous or, you know, infamous or however you want to look at it. We're making <laughs> strides, we're talking, but we also need to unify each other. And I think that's the biggest problem. It's like we are out there. When you do demographics or census, you cannot say where all the Nigerians are in wherever part of town. I'm going to talk for Massachusetts because we're here in Boston. And I say that because we are part of the minority. So if we're not able to get a, gather ourselves together and speak as one voice, of course our country is gonna go in shambles. It's not, we're not gonna be looked at. Folks wanna travel to Africa because they hear all the great things that we do or the things that we bring and the things that we show, but when they actually go there and understand how things work, they're gonna be like, what? You guys don't have a very legit voting system? You guys are not even okay with the priest brutality. You guys are killing and shit. That doesn't look good. It doesn't make sense. So as a um, diaspora, we need to learn how to change and make a movement and really talk the real talk and take accountability for what's going on in our country. I am done. <laughs> uh, anybody that one? Sorry, yeah, uh, well, I was I was doing my questionnaire. What was the question again? <laughs> Where's well, Dapo's turn to answer? Oh, what is the role of the night? What is the role to you, I guess, uh, of the Nigerian diaspora? 
in this NSAS movement? Uh, it's tough because, you know, because all we can do from where we are is to support. Um, and I think it has to be a joint, um, a joint venture between those in Nigeria and those in diaspora. Uh, because for most of us in diaspora, we're pretty much comfortable with how things are, where we are. Doesn't mean we don't want to go back to Nigeria or something, but the people back there are the ones that kind of like need to partner with us genuinely to be able to move this process uh, along because um, yeah, it, it has to be a, 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 a situation where we work together and become more efficient that way. Um, because I mean, we're so far away in different areas where we're located. Um, we can't just change anything in Nigeria except people on ground, uh, put measures in place that can help to uh, support that system. Just like during the NSAS, there were people that was part of that. Uh, we donated um, resources, money, and things like that, contributions and stuff. So, I mean, we I know there's so many other uh, other uh, groups that did even more, you know, because there's so much to what we can do, but we have to work together to know what the goals are and the objective to be able to know how we're going to attack all this. Uh, situations. That's that's what I have to say because diaspora alone can just change Nigeria. We have so much power. Don't get me wrong. So much uh, resources, so much influence, you know. But the people on ground will have to work with us in a way to make this to be successful. You know? But we have to work with them. Um, I mean, we have to work together, you know, <laughs> but. You know, because the fact that we're here, you can read so much online, you can watch so much on, on YouTube, you can read so much, but it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't really give you an idea of what is actually going on in Nigeria. You know, people on ground are the ones that can actually tell you what exactly is going on. You know, because you have to understand the media system in Nigeria, with the government kind of trying to, uh, you know, shut them down and things like that. So there's so much you can report too. You know, you can con continue to pay fines and fines and fines upon fines. I mean, uh, how long are you gonna stay in business? You know, so I, I, that's what I feel, but it doesn't mean I, I strongly believe that we need to work together. But I mean, it, it has to be a joint partnership. It can't just be, you know, because even for us in diaspora, if you want to put your resource towards something, you want to know what the outcome is going to be. You can't just keep funding something because you care about it. Because you care about it doesn't mean you don't want to see result. on the other hand. You know, I mean, we've been funding Nigeria for so long. I mean, like, diasporas are the biggest, I mean, almost about 6% of the GDP, if not more, six, about 6 to 7% of the GDP of Nigeria is coming from diaspora. So, I mean, it's not like we're like, we've been hands off. We've always been hands on, but we just need to take a strategic role now to be able to get to the, uh, to get a desired result instead of just giving it and giving it without giving it giving any it. recourse. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Close this out. Um, Dako, you're the financial guru here, right? So I, I don't want to overstep my, my lane, right? But I don't think that okay, this is what I believe, right? I believe that Nigerians and diaspora have zero power when it comes to making changes in Nigeria, right? And part of the reason why I say that is, like you said, I that agree. we have to depend on the people who are on the ground, right? When they move, we move. We exactly. Move without them, right? Mm -hmm. Because our when you, when you mentioned that GDP, that six percent GDP of Nigeria. Majority of that is is for the masses. It's not for the government as a whole. No, uh, yeah, yeah. It's for the industry or, or the Nigerian industries as a mm -hmm. whole. It mm -hmm. is basically the amount of money that Nigerians in diaspora send their Me family, yeah. their yeah. friends, for them to be able to stay alive, for mm -hmm. them to be able to eat, for them to be able to go and buy food, for them to go get water, for them to pay mm -hmm. their like, mm -hmm. bills and stuff like that. 
Well, that's where that six percent is coming from. Yeah. Right? So I'm, I agree with you on that part. But like, I think one of the things that we need to do, especially with this exercise, is that we need to be a little bit more centralized in the diaspora, right? So like in the United States, all we, we ought to know, and this is this is something I was going to talk to Malin about, and, I, and, I, and since Malin, you started this initiative, I would like for you to take it further, right? I like I like I like for us to start some centralized um, organization that basically creates providing information to all the other NSARS organizations so that we're on one page. Like Dako said, there's absolutely no point for us, to, for, for this person to have an agenda, this person have another agenda, this person have a, we should all have the same agenda. Exactly. Say, mm -hmm. point agenda or four point agenda. Mm -hmm. And that centralized location in yeah. the US is so that all the other NSARS organizations or, 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 or associations are in line with that. So if the if the if people in Nigeria say, hey, we need money because we have so many people who are being arrested, and we need lawyers to go get them, right? We have a branch that can say, okay, let's raise some other money because we know exactly where that money is going to. If we have a lot of people who don't have food, we do we raise money and we, and we know that that is going towards there. So if we don't, if we're not centralized, it's gonna be very, very difficult for, for Nigeria to ask for not just the US. You know, England, in Europe. I mean, in the last, I was looking at a report that had Nigeria growing everywhere in the world. The population of Nigeria everywhere in the world is increasing, right? So, and, and you have a new generation, you have a, a, a technology savvy generation of Nigerians also. And we can use some of this instrument to centralize ourselves, to, to mobilize ourselves so that we're in line with what the people of Nigeria want. I, I agree with you, and it's, it's yeah, it's so funny that you you kind of backed me up that way, and you know, there's so much money can do, yes. but if it's not used properly, right. it will never achieve the desired result. Um, you know, if we can uh, come up with a strategy here and have a centralized location, if we're gonna be trying to change the constitution, let's focus on that. If we're gonna be, you know, helping the NSAs to get people that was arrested or like you said, you know, we have to take it one point at a time. Right. Because what we can do is try to fix all the issue just in one city. It's gonna be hard. Okay, we have to, like, that was why I said strategic. Mm -hmm. Okay, next year, what are our goals in Nigeria that we want to accomplish? Okay start influencing people that we want to promote to run for offices, maybe under another platform that's a youth platform that we can, they can come to America, they can go all around uh, Nigeria and people will actually interview them, look at their resume, look at what they've done before they can, before people can rally around them because you have to see, you have to understand that the about 60 or 65 percent of Nigerians are uh, between the age of 19 to like 40 something, 40, 45. That is so much power. So maybe those are some of the things we need to start looking at. So with this PDP and APC, they won't even know what hit them when the time comes for the next election. So those are things we need to start looking into because um, if we're not strategic, I think it's just gonna be money that's, that we're flushing down the toilet, honestly. Because well, with these people we're fighting with, uh, these uh, uh, grandfathers and whatever they call them, they're not ready to leave anytime soon. And they're already preparing their own young people that's going to take over. Yes. So just as they're doing their own thing, we yeah, have, to, have to do our own thing too. That's very true. That well, this is very true. Said now, eh? mm. it, it's, it's, it's what happens when the hammer, hammer sees a nail. It, it knocks it in. Right, what you just said just not get it. Mm -hmm. And I think it went back to the previous point as far as when Marlon was asking us about what are we going to do with influencers and social medias and crypto technology, right? Um, and then Marlon made a statement which was funny. The Niger Nigerian, uh, they have one Instagram account, they have one Twitter account. I believe that Nigeria is technologically savvy. It's a disguise to make them look like they're not, right? But it's one of those things where if we have to do something now, we have to think a little one step ahead of them. Exactly. Right. Do not do mm -hmm. the same thing 
we cannot do the same thing that we're doing because Nigerian government expects us to do the same thing that has been done before. So mm -hmm. before you know it, they're already ahead of you. That's why they're winning. We yeah. don't have to change the strategy. We have to go back and change the strategy and, and come up with something that, hey, this is what we're going to do. And like that was said, it's not it's not a one day process, not a three months process. This is all the way down. The next election is 2020, 2022, I believe. Thank you. 2023. Yeah. So if we don't see a change between now and 2023, we're in trouble. Yeah. No, we need to start making the change now. As yeah. we're saying the elections are coming up, I just put in here, global team, we need to start appointing or a nominating who we want to start yeah. with that leadership and then start coming up with the process of campaigning before yeah. 2023. Huh? Because just like this lady, I'm not sure if she's based in Nigeria. She, she, she's part of us. She's part of us. Oh, yeah, there's two Alasi. You have me and then my... my. <laughs> yeah, the, no, no, she's talking, he's talking about the Ola on the chat. No, okay, she's one I was of like, us. huh? I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, so then no, I'm just saying, like, it's it would be nice. This is what, you know, the whole collaboration thing comes into play. Let's know what, you know, what they want to be able to achieve in Nigeria so that we can align... Our, our, our movements and our mission with, with their change also. In fact, I'm going to, if, okay, so now we're kind, we're kind of at the end. No, no, don't worry, we're going to talk, we're going to continue talking, we're kind of at the end. So I wanted to just give, especially people who are in the audience, if they would like to talk, please raise your hand. Ola, do you want to say something? In fact, I'm just going to make you say something because we've been chatting a lot in the, <laughs> <laughs> in the thing. So I've asked you to, I mean, if anybody wants to say anything or add, ask any question, please, um, feel free to chime in and uh, yeah, sorry, continue with your, you know, what you're saying that one. Or... Yeah, so, you know, it, it's amazing because during the NSAS uh, protest, it was funny how Jack, uh, the owner of Twitter, was able to help Nigeria mm -hmm. and was able to create, um, uh, I don't know what it's called, um, like something for that at the back of the NSAS that's kind of unique to Nigeria. That's that's the power we have, man. Especially the young generations. I mean, look at the guys that did Paystack. You know, those those are young folks. I think, like like my brother OG said, we need to start collaborating more, and start looking at things that we are smart at that we can beat these people that are still uh, that use uh, what is it called? They're not like um, they don't use the proper system that Anna. Uh, uh, what's, what's that thing called? Like a clock that is still like old school. That's what they've been uh, using to run us. Yeah. yeah, you know, so we need to change it because, I mean, there's no reason why if we need to meet with Jack to create another crypto or something like that to fund this thing, why wouldn't he do it? Yeah. Why wouldn't he do it? You understand? So those are things that if he could do it for Nigeria during the NSAS, trust me, the sky's the limit. Most of these people want the world to be a much better place than, you know, so we just have to tap into that and tap into the resources they they, they cannot, like offering us to tackle some of these uh, situations in Nigeria. So, uh, you know, we need to definitely form that coalition and continue to task our people back home on strategies and agree to disagree on cogent um, tasks that we need to take on. And, you need to check them out one at a time. Does anybody want to say anything? I'm going to start reading out the, you know, what happened with the polls. I thought it was quite interesting. Did you guys see the results? I did. So uh, what would you consider the worst symptom of, sim of systemic corruption in Nigeria? Government incompetency <laughs> uh, was 83% while police brutality came uh, 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 second. Uh, human rights and, and abuses, which I thought would get more love, didn't get any love at all. But I guess everything starts with government, so I get, I, I think that's where that answer comes in. There's no right or wrong answers, obviously. I mean, people have their own opinions, and you know, uh, Falls, the bad guy, recently released a controversial video called Johnny in response to the events of October 20, 2020. Do you believe Nigeria needs more of this type of messaging for this Sorosuke speak up movement? Everybody, five eighty-three percent says yes. One of you have not seen the video, but they say we should still speak up. So no, I like go and watch the video. It's on YouTube. <laughs> now that that Faust took a bold move because he knew oh, that could hurt his career. 
That could hurt uh, you so much. You gotta give him props, man. Of course, now. Gotta give him props, honestly. Uh, bow for that guy, mm-hmm. No, it, it was it was it was perfect imagery. I mean, it was meant to be gut wrenching. It was meant to be gut rage wrenching. So I thought he did a great job, and I uh, encourage um, you know the artists to continue. These are the you know one of the things I always talk about the elites is that you know elites in other countries. And I, I will say other country because elite is elite wherever you go. They're supposed to be the thinkers, the ones who've made money, who are able to uh, sit down on no, their daddy's land and be thinking no, and doing no, art no, and, no, no, and, you know, no. and all these other, you know, mm-hmm. the Renaissance. A lot of these things come about from um, these people funding or finding people to fund because a lot of the revolution always comes from, the, the, you know, the poor masses because it's pressure that pushes people to maybe whatever. So, it's, just, it's just like Bill Gates funding polio with over yeah, in Africa. Yeah, so the elites have to have these kind yeah. of like philanthropic, philanthropic, so, you know, um, urges, you know. So I think that some some of the things like for what he did, because apparently his them. father was a lawyer. I heard, I'm not sure if it's true. Yeah, his he father is. was a lawyer for Fela. Yeah, yeah he mm-hmm. is. Sure. Yeah, that, uh, his father was a lawyer. For, so you know, it's like. Maybe, you know, maybe he thinks like that. I don't know. So, okay, question number three. Do you believe that the Nigerian federal government or, or, or CNN is telling the most truthful account of the events that happened like it's okay? 83% said um, CNN, 1%, wait, 17% said the uh, Nigerian government. Do you believe that the federal government has handled the whole NSAS protest in a world-class fashion? Uh, 83% said- World-class No. <laughs> One uh uh seventeen percent said not sure, but you know at least nobody said yes. So, <laughs> do you believe that any federal government uh, reform and structuring should start with implementing of world class pensions and salaries for low to mid level level civil servants, armed forces, and about four? This is where it starts getting interesting. It's not very interesting when people just say yes or no and they don't. So we had four people say yes to that. One person said no, and one person said not sure. Right. So, you know, um, they're basically saying that all the normal people that you may know in the government, that they will be able to maybe have a house at the end of the 20 years they've given their life and have reliable ser- uh, 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 salaries so that they will not be at least they will not have they will have less excuse to go into corruption. Right. And what other all the problems we're trying to solve in Nigeria is through government. We're saying we're going to solve it, whether it's light or whether it's you know governance or whatever. So if you don't have good legs and and hands inside and intelligent people, because I think also if you offer these kind of pensions and salaries, Mm -hmm. you would definitely attract much higher intellect people to those positions. I mean, it will be a process. Let me not say that it's going to be light and day. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll take to that, right? I think I was one of the people that said no. And the reason why I said no was this idea as far as like... restructuring the, the government reform system using this process is a good idea, but it can't be the only one, right? Of course, I, think, of course, of course. I think it's one of those things where if we hit the core, which is, you know, and you said this earlier, if you if you can provide good infrastructure, if you can provide water, if you can provide jobs, if you can provide food, if you can provide shelter, if you can provide public education, those basic things that every Nigerian should have, right? Mm-hmm. Then you can start looking at this this format as far as the reconstruction based on pension and salary. Well, I, I completely, I completely first. disagree, but go yeah. ahead. If you don't get, my thought process to it is, if you don't get those things first, right, it becomes very, very difficult for you to implement this because you have- How money. are you going to get those things first? How are you going to get those things is the question I ask you. But guess I'm saying that even before it's you- government. Get, before you get this, right, before you do the structuring, you have to get those things first. Because yeah, but what I'm saying that to get those things first is the government is going to build your water supply. Is the world government that's going to provide the light. So if the government cannot do it, then you never move forward. So my question is like, okay, so I get. Let me just say one last thing, and I like is that like when you're in an airplane, and the airplane is going down, what do they tell you to do? And you have a child, they tell you to put the mask on yourself first so that you'll be able to have the oxygen to take care of the child. Right. And what I'm saying is that the, that mask on your on your face to me is you have to get the government whole to be able to do things. If you put even Obama and his Obama team in, the, in charge of Nigeria, when do you put them there? You say, okay, perform. They'll look at you and say, how? 
every parastatal is corrupt. Everything is, you cannot move. You cannot say this should happen and this happens. You see? I think we're saying the same thing. I'm just, I'm just, I just don't think that the restructuring the government, the government based on pensions and salary is, is the way to go about it. That's, yeah. so so what, what, I agree. I agree. what is this question? No, my question, no, I think I think we're having a uh, we're having well, we just have a little difference of opinion on yeah. how it should start. Because remember, okay, my question says, how does this start? Right. Which right? number? Um, number Which, five. I agree. So, the, so the question is, and this is why we're here, so we can have mm -hmm. these kind of engaging conversations. Is that I think that if you want to fix all the basic things, the water, mm -hmm. the lights, and everything, you're going to need a functioning government to do it. It's not going to happen. You're going to need people to hire the electricians. You're going to need people to train the electricians. You're going to need people to, um, you know, as a, you know, I'm a project manager for you know construction. So I'm thinking, okay, if I'm going to now give Lagos, let's just say Lagos light, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need a team. I'm going to need this. Now those are all civil servants that are supposed to work within the Ministry of Works. So if these people are on the take and not really going to actually do the business, and are you not just perpetuating? When you now give them the money, okay, fix it. These are these people are not qualified. They don't have the incentive to do the right thing. They're just going to look at the same lump of money. They have nothing to lose. You know, like the whole point of pension is that after 20 years, I'll get a house and a car and it will be my house, my family forever. That is the point of a pension to solidify. No, but, but, but you know, I, I, to me, I, I think it, it's just like here in America. They don't delay your salary mm -mm. and you still fulfill your job. You don't need the government right. to fulfill your job. No, but there's a government job. But, but, but yes, yeah, still, it doesn't matter. I mean, even government jobs here, yeah, they pay them on time. Yes. But, but see, they also pay it, them something that's commissurate. The salaries are like, what, yeah, 40K? Yeah, I, what are you that, going to pay can, them, 40K? That, that, that 40K can, has no pension. No but that can be K. debatable though, Marlon. Mar see, the thing is, if you pay them on time, even if you pay them the salary that is not uh, commiserate to whatever they should be paid, trust me, I think most of them still do their job. Yes. But because you owe them five months, seven months, 10 months, and you don't want them to get into uh, corruptible activities, bro, I mean, but you're saying stability. Mass. Yes, exactly. but you're saying stability and to provide, to provide, um, Okay, let's even go from that point of view. To provide constant salary. Do you know the infrastructure for, for the thousands of people? Think of the infrastructure it takes. Then think of the kind of people that you need to manage that infrastructure. These are, you're talking about corporate uh, level it's, people. It's you're true. talking about corporate level people that can handle that kind of, I mean, look at the, the credentials that Mr. Biden has put forward for his people. Those are the kind of people you need to attract. And those people will require a proper salary and a proper pension so, so that they will be tied into, invested into working for Nigeria, uh, for Nigeria's sake. Mama, I agree. Own, Every, everything will have to work seamlessly. I totally agree. But the thing is, whether um, the government, if the government pays the salary on time, whoever is running the government from that standpoint, if they get paid on time, will still do their job right. But no, but you're separating benefits and salary. When you get a job, you're, they are, they are, this part of the salary is the benefits. But that is what it's, you're so, thinking So here. what I'm trying to say is so that you're losing more than just your 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 basic salary. You also, get you're losing your 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 children's education fund. You're losing all that time into but, long term. But Marlon, you're thinking of in a developed country. That's what no, that, I, that's I, what you're no, thinking. I'm thinking about <laughs> no. Oh, Marlo, excuse me. me. In 1960. There was a budget. That mm -hmm. budget had a much more pension than it has now. And mm -hmm. that was in 1960 of the same country you're talking about. Yes. So it's not a matter of developed country. Is that if you want people to invest in your in your country, you said it yourself. You came in and you felt that Nigeria gave nothing to you. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Yeah, but, That's what no, that, but, but, nobody but, but, feels see, invested. Economy, no, but but you look when you look back, I'm and I'm uh, the economy now. Let, yeah, exactly. let, 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 let in Kemjika, we've been uh, talking over uh, him. So, uh, uh, so your example, your analogy as far as the economy in Nigeria in 1960 is a different economy yeah. than what it is today, right? Your your suggestion as far as reconstructing, maybe it's maybe the way the, the question is worded. I think it's a good idea. I just don't think it's a way to start. 
the first thing that we want to be able to do is create bridges and station and stages of accountability and transparency yeah. across the board in our industry, yeah. right? Once that is created, then you will find that your salaries and your pensions will begin to make sense. Because like that we were saying, the problem with Nigeria now is that a lot of people are not getting salaries. Not even talk about pension. They're not even getting salaries. Part of the reason why they're not getting their salary is because there's a bridge and there's an existing and, and accountability where that money, that, that allocation of that particular fund is not available. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that that bridge is actually taken care of. You want a situation where every Agreed. industry, if we're saying this is education, if we're saying that we're going to do private uh, uh, public education for this town, we're going to allocate $50 million. We're going to put this person in charge of that, that uh, uh, development. And the person will report to this committee. This committee will report to this uh, subcommittee. You create that uh, accountability process. You create that bridge, right? And then when that is, when that is done, then you can start working on the salary and the pensions because now you have that aspect of it taken care of. Yeah. So that's what I'm that's, saying. I'm not disagreeing that's, that's, with that's, I, no, totally, I, I, I'm totally I, I, in agreement I agree with that. With, I agree with yeah. what you're saying now, but you know, and I think I think I, I'm looking at it coming in unison, meaning that mm -hmm. the main issue is the social. I think that the, the process of accountability has already started by technology. It has nothing to do with us. It's all the social media that we've been talking about, the crypto, all those things. They are parts of the accountability structure that really, at this point, the Nigerian, uh, you know, the elders that are controlling Nigeria have no choice but to adhere to, which is yeah. what we're saying. You, yeah. Everything was broadcasted live from different places, from Lekki Tollgate, UK mm -hmm. and uh, CNN were able to notice all these things. They are now saying that we're going to sanction, and that's what they need to do. They need to find some scapegoats, whether it's, you know, one or two of the main people, freeze their accounts and let them know, ah, this thing is real. Yeah. That's the... I agree with that. Like once, open, yes. Exactly, exactly. I agree with you there. But once you start doing it, you want to start in the implementation. Maybe that's, mm -hmm. you're right, the way I worded. Once yeah. you start implementation, you're going to need a team that's capable to do the job and cool. give them the infrastructure and everything to get it done. Mm -hmm. Now, that's where you now need to start looking at the people that have been attracted by a lifestyle of corruption that find themselves in the government. Let yeah. one of my students in, um, well, not, well, one of the, the young architects I hired from University of Lagos before I left, when I was, you know, doing my construction uh, firm in Nigeria. You were an elite. Yes, when I was part of my elite. <laughs> so when I, you know, they, they, they you know, he, he came that. in, he came in and said that- I need to sanction you. What he said that, yes, now let them sanction. The bottom line is that they used to say things like, um, we have a teacher that says, if you learn it very well. So what does that mean, if you learn it very well? He said that the teacher will come in and he will write an equation and he will write the answer. Then he will, do, before leaving the, the, and throwing the chalk on the, on, on the side there, he will say, if you learn it very well, you will get this answer. Now, what is the, why does that happen? Because the guy can't afford to stay there, bro. He cannot afford to feed his family and stay in that classroom for any amount of time, mm. right? And so we, when you start thinking of why that is, I'm just why I'm talking of that level of civil servant. These are all civil servant because you know when you're talking of that level of civil servant, that system is going to produce nothing but problems. You have to literally deal with that if you're thinking of in putting in the water. You have to say, ah, how can we get Kendrika out of Houston? Or we need him to come back and lead this. We need it because that's the, there's no way you can solve the problems with the people that are there. So how do you create it more attractive and capitalism so that people would want to leave their... Nigerians are 70% of all the doctors, black doctors in, in, in America. But yet our medical system is not good. So how are you going to get them back? By just telling them they're going to collect their salary on time? Well, I have a news for you. It's going to take a lot more than that. So the question is, when you start moving into implementation and how are we going to get it done, you're going to now look at your government as a, it has to be like a corporation. And you're going to have to pay people commensurate. You're going to have to give even just the teacher some sort of thing that, ah, if I stay with these people 10 years and I do a good job, I will get it. That's, you know what, that's one of the questions I'm asking in my research. I'm asking Nigerians that were around those times. What did you get if you were civil servant and the pension? What did you used to get? Does any of you know the stories? 
Like anybody heard a story of what they used to get in pension? I, I don't know. I, I don't know the exact amount, right? Um, I, I had a couple of um, family members, uh, some uncles and aunts that were civil ser servants, right? And at that particular, th the ones, and they retired now, right? And they feel sorry for the present civil servants right now because the civil servants 20, 30 years ago, like I said, those the civil servants back then, right, were middle class at that time. You know, if you see anybody that worked in the government, especially where they had different grades or tiers. Yes, yes, yes. Grade, I think it was like grade 15, 16, 17. Yes. I mean, these guys were living modest lives. They had a good, you know, they were considered middle class at that particular time. The civil servants now are just as poor as anybody else. Yes. Point, you know, and, and part of it is that, the, the part of it is they, they are supposed to get paid. They're not getting paid. Yes, but even the payment is still not going to be enough. The payment is not even good. The payment is not even good. But the yeah, is, you, have, you have civil servants that haven't been. You have police officers that haven't been paid in almost a year plus. Over exactly. Year. So how can they not? So how can they not? Um, how can they not? Um, um, be taking. This is what I'm saying. The point of NSARS is not NSARS. It's ad pension. You're trying to get that policeman to not feel the need to accost any random person for his iPhone. That is what you're trying to solve. Everything else is just drama. You're trying okay. to get that police. They shouldn't be doing it in the first place. That's the whole thing. Yes, but no, that's what we're trying to say. But we're trying to say that when you have hunger and you have starvation for generations, it's not that. Is this the first people to be poor and hungry? Mm -hmm. They are poor and hungry for generations. And then you now give them a gun. You don't give them any education. That uniform and the gun is the only way he has to make money. But Marlon, and, part, of, part of that problem too is accountability. Part of the reason why they're doing this is because they believe that nobody's going to stop them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. stop them because everybody is under the same pressure. But why are we still paying Napa for lights when the, there's no 24 hour light? I, exactly. I, I don't understand that. When I went exactly. home, I couldn't matter my dad. I was like, that's another, look, that's what? a whole another hour and a half. Uh, that, 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 is, <laughs> that is all part of it. But that's part of it. Like, we want to make yeah. sure that the police. Are getting their yeah. good salary so they'll then, go out they ask people on, on gunpoint or huh? check anyway, anyway i want to wrap up i want to wrap up so everybody give you a little you know i want everybody to say you know their you know um their little farewells and everything we can talk afterwards but i want to wrap up so we can stop the recording and everything and we can chat afterwards so um i want to thank everybody for attending and sorry support the nigerian diaspora please everybody um and my panelists uh in kemjika Olaomi, and dapo thank you so much for everything Thank you guys you. have been, um, and I think that um, with what we have here, at least we have enough to move the conversation forward. Um, NYO um, and, uh, and Afro American Culture Initiative, I think we've been really re re revisited this whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, in this new time, and I think we've been working together. I hope to get their youth input into what we're doing here to try and um, not just give voice, but actually work to provide some of these you know, in-depth research and solutions. So, but we can only do it with your support. So please go to our website, um, make a small contribution, whatever you can. And um, yeah, thank you very much and have a blessed yeah. uh, rest of your Thanksgiving weekend. Yes, thank yep. you. Thank you. Right, thank you for having us and stay tuned for more conversations such as this. Stop all, thank you, Afro-American Culture Initiative board member. It's a pleasure, guys. A lot. Enjoyed it. <laughs> All right, so we are. Let me stop the com. I can. I'm stopping the recording. Share yeah, I was like, are recording. We... So now we can. So we can uh, read now. So we can really talk. We can all just talk. <laughs> yeah.